Boston Blackie. Well, we have something in common. Apparently, you don't know me either. May I come in? If you don't, I'm coming out. Thank you. I'm Evelyn Jones. Miss Evelyn Jones? Is that important? It is me. Blackie, I need help. Well, give me a clue. Uh, what do you want? A safe opened? A bank robbed? A fire started? Or just plain somebody murdered? I'd like you to keep somebody from being murdered. Well, that's a little out of my line, Inspector Faraday keeps telling me. Uh, who do I keep from being knocked off? Me. Say, there are too many ugly people in the world right now for us to lose a beautiful one. What's the story? I have to deliver a package at 2 o'clock tomorrow morning at 484 Willow Street. Now, all I want you to do is to go there with me. It'll just take a few minutes. Sorry, I can't do it. Why not? Because of Mary Wesley? More or less. More because Mary has a way of finding out about things, and... Less because she happens to be on a train going to Wisconsin right now. Mary Wesley isn't on a train going anywhere. I happen to know she is. I happen to know she isn't. Really? Then where do you happen to know she is? Never mind. But if you don't do what I ask you, next time you see Mary Wesley, it'll be just to identify the body. <laughs> Now meet Richard Calmer's Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy, friend to those who have no friends. Are you sure this is the right house, Evelyn? 484 Willis Street, Blackie. There's no mistake about that. Let's just hope this whole thing is a mistake. I know what I'm doing. Well, I know why I'm doing this. For Mary, not for you. Then why am I in his thing, boy? Well, Shorty, I'm here to protect Evelyn, and you're here to protect me. Who's going to protect me? Evelyn. Everybody happy now? So, what do we do? I don't want both of you to come inside with me, just you, Blackie. The short guy stays out here. Maybe we should both wait out here. A lot of good that'll do me. Come on in, Blackie. Keep your eyes and ears open, Shorty, and your mouth closed. Oh, sure, boy. You bet. You bet. We're a little early. Probably not here yet. Mm, nice place. Mm hmm. Guy who owns it has money. Good money, good taste, too. Want to look around while we're waiting? No, I'm not sightseeing. Who are you meeting here? You neglected to tell me that. You'll be unhappy not knowing. Close to tears, but I get it. Ah. Good view from the window here. I can see Shorty in the shadows across the street. Look, Blackie, it's, it's just two o'clock, and it isn't like this guy to be late. I think he's somewhere in the house now. Well, let's go find him. No. He obviously won't meet me unless I'm alone. Now, why don't you go outside? Have you meet this guy and then skip out on me without telling me where Mary is? Oh, no. Do as I say, Blackie. You'll never see Mary again. Except in the morgue? Mm-hmm. That's about it. Argument over. What do I do? Well, it's exactly two o'clock now. Go across the street with your pal, Shorty. If you hear me yell, or if I'm not out at exactly five after two, come in for me. You get it? Sure, I get it. But let's not, uh, uh, let's just hope that before the five minutes are up, you don't. Hey, Blackie, it's been almost five minutes now, and I ain't seen nobody going to 44 across the street. Evelyn was probably right, Shorty. Whoever she was meeting was already in the house, just waiting for me to leave. Mm. Uh-oh, time's up. Uh, now what? Evelyn didn't yell for us, so we're going in to uh, call for her. See, boss, you think maybe she could have yelled and, and uh, we didn't hear her? Say, it's quite enough out here to hear a chin drop. Come on, we'll both go in. Hey. That door's locked, huh? That won't hold us up for long. 
Well, look, I'll, I'll go look in a window and see what goes. Okay? Yeah, no, Shorty. There's a gasoline station two blocks down the street. Beat it down there and call Faraday. I don't like the looks of this. Yeah, well, I tell him. Tell him to send some men up here right away to 484 Willow Street. There's trouble. Oh, Darn it. What's the matter, boy? I'm a little nervous, I guess. The lock, Jimmy, slips and scratches the door. Gosh, boys, can't you get the lock open? Yeah, there, it's open now. Uh, beat it to that phone call, Faraday, quick. Yeah, sure, boy, sure, boy. I'll run all the way, huh? Then get back here as fast as you can. Uh, okay, boy, I'll be right back. Ellen? Hey, Evelyn. Evelyn. Evelyn, where are you? Evelyn. When I tell you, Inspector Fanny, it's the honest truth. Blackie's been missing for eight hours now. Look, Shorty, this is police headquarters, not a problem clinic. If Blackie gave you the slip this morning, go somewhere else and try about it. But Inspector Blackie just, just disappeared. After I call you, I run right back to 44 Willow Street, and Blackie ain't there, and the girl ain't there. Maybe they went to a movie. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. So they like late movies. Who cares? Oh, Inspector, please, don't, don't kid about this. Miss Wesley's missing, and Blackie had a hunch there was trouble in that house. And I figure he's found it. Inspector, hey. What do you want, Rollins? Officer Thompson on the Branchville Beach says he found a bum sleeping in an alley this morning. What's he want, applause? Maybe he wants a reward, Friday. Blackie. Oh, gosh, boy. What happened to you? I don't know, Shorty. Somebody did a job on me, and I went to sleep on it. Okay, Blackie. Take your pal, Shorty, and beat it. Go on, get out of here. I'm not leaving, Faraday. Well, Rollins, you get out of here. Yes, sir, Inspector. Right away, hey. I gotta get somebody to listen to me. Now, I suppose you feel better. Look, I'm a busy man. If you have something to say, say it fast and get out of here. Mary Wesley's missing. Mary Wesley's missing what? Very funny, Faraday. Only this is no time for jokes. A girl named Evelyn Jones is holding Mary somewhere. Evelyn Jones? Yes, huh? Evelyn Jones. Shorty and I took her to her house at 484 Willow Street at 2 o'clock this morning. We went along to see that nothing happened to her. You expect me to believe this? Faraday, don't you understand the Jones girl knows where Mary is? Then why don't you ask the Jones girl to find her? Because I can't find the Jones girl. While she was in the house, Shorty and I waited outside. After a little while, I went in to get her. I was knocked out and didn't wake up until a little while ago way out in Branchville. I don't care about the Jones girl or me, but will you please get it into that thick head of yours that Mary's missing? Hold it, Blanky. Yeah? Call for Boston Blanky, Inspector Hayes. Okay, Rollins, put it through. And send out every available man to find Mary Wesley. Okay, Hayes. After all this, Mary better be missing. Hey, Blanky, the call for you. Thanks. And, Inspector, thanks for giving that order to Rollins. I won't forget it. Hello. Hello, Blanky. This is Mary. But, uh, uh, oh, uh, Joe! Joe, how are you, old boy? What do you mean, old boy? This is Mary. Well, I thought uh, you were out of town, Joe. I'm not Joe, I'm Mary, and I'm not out of town because I missed my train, sent the night at a friend's house, and now I'm home. Well, swell, Joe, uh, uh, stay where you are. Hey, and that's not any Joe. Give me that phone. Sorry, let's go with that. Hey, hello, hello. Who is this? Hello, Inspector Ferry, this is Mary Wesley. Mary Wesley? Where are you? In my apartment. Inspector Blackie isn't in your office because he's in trouble, is he? I'll say he's in trouble. Here, let me speak to her, will you? Yeah, I'm not give talking to anybody. Inspector, what's the matter? Read about it in the papers, Miss Wesley. I'm going to put your boyfriend in jail. Now listen, Faraday. I'm as surprised as you are about this thing. I'm not a bit surprised. This is just what I expected, a gag. Mary Wesley was in trouble. You took a girl to a house. She disappeared. You got hit on the head. Da, 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 da. That same old phony story. Okay, Faraday, I'm sorry. Mary's not in trouble, and that's all I care about. See you around. Stay where you are, Blackie. What was all this talk about Evelyn Jones? Skip it, Faraday. It isn't important anymore. About a house at 484 Willow Street. I tell you, now that Mary's all right, Evelyn Jones and 484 Willow Street aren't important. Well, we're going down and have a look in this house at 484. You look, Faraday. I'm not interested. So long. So long, huh? You're going with me to Willow Street. And if there's anything phony up there... You're going to jail for so long. This is the house, Faraday, just as I described it to you. Yeah, on the outside, Blackie. Yeah, yeah, there's it, it, a house we come to with a Jones family, Inspector Friday. Nobody asked you, Shorty. They didn't? Oh. Come on, let's go in. Hey, Rollins, what's the idea of blocking that door? Yes, I was looking for a scratch on the door Blackie said he made when he... Give me the lock, hey. You find it? Hey. 
Yeah, yeah, here it is. Will that prove I was here this morning, Faraday? Yeah, yeah, will, will that prove it, Inspector? Nobody's talking to you, Shorty. Hey, all right. Oh. You're attacking. Come on, let's go inside. Now, as you go into the house, the living room is to the right, Inspector. And to the left of the foyer, there's a large sofa. Now, if you... Now, if I what? Hey, boss. But you're a tappy. Hey, what is this? This is an empty house. A five-year-old kid could see that. Well, let's go get a five-year-old kid. Hey, Inspector Faraday, hey. This place ain't been lived in for months. The dust is an inch thick, hey? Okay, Blackie. Explain your way out of this. Wait. I don't understand it. The house was completely furnished when I was here at 2 o'clock this morning. Not this house. But of course it was this house. That scratch on the door out there proves it. It was made with a locked jimmy, Inspector Hay. I could tell that. At 2 o'clock this morning, I was standing right here. And Evelyn Jones was sitting on a sofa right over there. This house is empty. Uh, excuse me, Inspector Friday, but it ain't exactly empty. Yeah? Why not? Well, it's got a dame in it lying over there in the corner. She's uh, a little bit dead. Uh Uh-oh. Don't move, Blackie. Who is it? Well, you wouldn't want me to tell you a lie, would you, Inspector? She's Evelyn Jones, the girl I told you about. So you eliminate first and identify him later, don't you, Blackie? Okay, maybe we'll go easy with you on account of that. Maybe we'll put a pillow on the back of your electric chair. Now back to Boston Blackie. Forced to act as bodyguard for Evelyn Jones because he believes his friend Mary Wesley is being held prisoner, Blackie loses track of the Jones girl and is himself knocked unconscious. Hours later, while he's pleading with Faraday to help him find either Evelyn Jones or Mary Wesley, Mary phones that she's all right. Then Blackie and Faraday go to the house where Blackie says he was knocked out. And though Blackie claims it was completely furnished, the house is now empty and dust filled. Then they find Evelyn Jones dead. As we return to our story, Faraday is getting ready to take Blackie to headquarters. Don't you see what's happened here, Faraday? The house next door to this is identical. That's the house I was in. But you said 484 was the number, and this is 484, and the scratch is on this door. How do you explain that? I don't know. The house I went into was, was furnished. I know that. It wasn't empty. The floors were clean, not covered with dust. Then why did we find the Jones girl in here? Because whoever she was meeting killed her in the house next door and brought her body over here. Hey, Inspector Faraday, hey. That's you, Rollins? Yeah. What'd you find out next door? Old couple is over there. Were there all last night, too. They don't know nothing. What about the door over there? Not a scratch on it. Ah, uh, Blackie, who are you trying to kid? I don't know, unless maybe it's myself. I don't know, I just don't get it. Well, you're going to get it, and fast. Rollins? Yeah, Inspector Hayes. Right next door and telephone headquarters. Sure. Tell them to send out the coroner, photographers, and fingerprint men right away. Right away, hey. Not a double, hey. Don't you want me to go with him, Inspector? You stay right where you are, Blackie. Don't forget I still have a gun on you. Don't you always? I said stay where you are. Can't I walk around the room a little? Okay. But that's all. Faraday, you're such a kind old master. Isn't he, Shorty? Oh, yeah, yeah. What are you doing over there? Just seeing where the door leads. Looks like a closet door. Let's see how the family skeleton is doing. That nose of yours is going to get you in trouble someday. Sniff. It's sniff. We'll see what I tell you. It's a closet. Faraday, you thought there was only one body in this house. You're only half right. Here's another. Another body? Where? In the closet. Here, right here. Look. There's no body in there. You mean there wasn't, Faraday. But there is now, Inspector. Yours. Like well, I love it, Shorty. Let the inspector out just before Rollins gets back. Hey, boss, where are you going? I don't know yet, except I'm sure it's out of here. Gee, boss, when I let him out of here, the closet, what am I going to tell him? Faraday is always telling everybody to be quiet. Ask him how it feels for him to be shut up. Hello? Mary, this is Blackie. Oh, Blackie. What's the matter? Uh, just the usual. Faraday wants me for murder. Oh, bless. Not again. Oh, Mary. Yes, again. <laughs> what are you going to do? Meet you in the lobby at 21 West 18th Street. What for? I want to see an apartment about a clue. <laughs> 
Well, Mary, Evelyn Jones' apartment looks as nice as she did. Yes, it does, but, uh, Blackie, what are we looking for? The name of the man Evelyn Jones was meeting in that house and what she was delivering to him. Well, I guess this is the right place to look, then, isn't it? Uh, Mary, look around carefully, will you? Help me? Yes, sure. For a book, a, a letter, a newspaper. Even a cigarette butt may be all we need. Okay. Ah, oh, here's a letter on a desk. It's, um, it's only partly written. Let's have a look at it. Or is it just about the weather? No, no, it isn't. It says, Dear Bob, uh-huh. you remember those letters I wrote you about last month? Well, it looks as if I'll be out there with you in a week or two, a very wealthy little girl. That's enough. That, that's all there is, Bob. It sounds to me as if she was blackmailing somebody. Definitely. Well, this explains her meeting somebody in that house at two in the morning and why she was afraid something would happen to her. Of course. She went to that house for the payoff. Only the payoff she got was not negotiable. Yes, but whom was she blackmailing? That, my sweet, is a question without an answer. I asked good ones, huh? You proud of me? That's the second question without an answer. Keep looking. Oh. Hey, what's this? Hmm? Oh. I've written note of some kind. Blackie, look what it says. Yeah. Have one. Meet me at 484 Willow Street at 2 a.m. next Monday morning. Signed, J. Corrigan. That's it. That's the man she met, and that's the man who killed her. Maybe. Mr. Corrigan is quite a character in the blackmail business. I think I'll see him and see about this. All right, Corrigan. Let's have the whole story in straight. I've got nothing to hide from you, Blackie. I was doing business with Evelyn Jones. Were you blackmailing her, or was she blackmailing you? We were doing business together, Evelyn and I. Evelyn had the letters. I had the know-how. We were going to share a take of 100000 50 Who wrote those letters? A fellow by the name of Gerald Lawson. Has enough dough to buy Fort Knox, Lock, Stock, and Bullion. Oh, I get it. Evelyn didn't want to blackmail Lawson directly, so she hired you to do the job for half the stake. She couldn't have hired a better man. Then you met her at 484 Willow Street at 2 o'clock this morning, where she was to give you the letters. It was 3 o'clock, but she never showed up. 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, it's unimportant. But what is important, Carrigan, is that you're lying. You not only saw her, you took the letters from her, then killed her so you wouldn't have to divide your 100,000. So? I have proof you planned to meet Evelyn in that house on Willow Street. A note you wrote to her. I found it in her apartment. I admit I wrote that letter. So what? So that means she was going there to meet you. So she was going there to meet me. I admit that's true. But you can't prove a thing against me, Blackie. Don't you think you ought to admit that? Blackie, did Corrigan kill Evelyn Jones? Of course he did, Mary. Well, then let's go to the police. We can't, Mary. I, I can't prove anything yet. But I'm going to let Corrigan convict himself. Will he? He has Evelyn's letters. He knows Gerald Lawson will pay him $100,000 for them. Oh, I see. When he goes to Mr. Lawson with the letters, he'll prove that he met Evelyn Jones. And that will prove that he killed her. Mary, you're brilliant. Oh, I'm going places as a detective. Well, I'm going places as a detective, too. To Gerald Lawson's office. <laughs> Go there, Mr. Blackie. Mr. Lawson will see you. And on my way out, uh, I'll see you. Just go right in. Thank you. Gerald Lawson? Oh, yes. Yes. Sit down. Sit down. Thanks, I will. I, I understand you want to see me about some letters? Oh, I don't have them, uh, Mr. Lawson. But I know who does. Oh? A man by the name of Corrigan. Oh, but I... I uh, could I make a suggestion? Go to the police. Tell them that Corrigan is trying to blackmail you. When they find those letters on him, he'll go to jail for the murder of Evelyn Jones. Oh, no. No, no, I, I, I can't go to the police. Why not? Under those letters, I, I'd have to tell the police about them, and they'd probably be read, and well, I, I'd be ruined. I'd much rather pay any amount to Corrigan to get those letters privately. Well, then, maybe we'll have to do this the hard way. I don't care, but, but what do we do? We have to make Corrigan show up for those letters. That will prove he saw Evelyn, killed her, and took them from her. Oh, but I, I've already made it clear to him that I'll pay. All right. Let's write him a letter. Have it delivered by a messenger and arrange a meeting for this afternoon. I'll hide nearby, and when he hands you the letters, we'll destroy them and hand Carrigan over to the police as Evelyn Jones' murderer. He 
Where's your letters, Mr. Larson? Oh, thanks. It's just leaving out of my desk. Yes. Uh, uh, perhaps you'd better look at it, Blackie. All right. Here you are. Anything else, sir? Oh, no, no. That'll be all, Miss Walters. Yes. Well, Blackie, will that note do? Will it do? It does wonders. See this smaller piece of paper in my hand? Yes. It's the note which made the appointment for Evelyn Jones to come to 484 Willow Street. Oh, well, which Corrigan wrote, of course. Which you wrote, Lawson. On the same typewriter, your girl used to type out the letter you just dictated. You, you can't tell that? I can because the defective letter L and the numeral 2 are identical on each note. That would stand up in a court of law. All right. So what if they were written on the same typewriter? It doesn't mean anything. You went to Evelyn's apartment looking for your letters. You couldn't find them, but in her mailbox, you did find a note from Corrigan. Evelyn hadn't seen it yet. This, this is nothing but theory. Theory can turn out to be the truth, you know. You brought Corrigan's note here to your office, destroyed it, then wrote one of your own to her, changing the time of the meeting from 3 o'clock, when Corrigan wanted to see it, to 2 o'clock. But, but Evelyn was found in Corrigan's house. You, you can never prove that I was in it. Glad you mentioned that house, Lawson. That's the one thing I still don't understand. But I'll go to work on that as soon as Faraday goes to work on you. All right, all right, class. Everybody in the lineup, Roland? Yes, Mr. All right, keep them standing up there under those lights. Now, where's the old man who lives at 486 Willow Street? Right here, Mr. Faraday. Inspector Faraday. Quiet, Blackie. Yes, Mr. Faraday. All right, you. Which one of those guys in the lineup is Gerald Lawson? Uh, no, that one there on the end. No, I never saw that old man before. Quiet, Lawson. Quiet, Lawson. Quiet, Lawson. Quiet, Lawson. Quiet, Lawson. quiet, Faraday. Yes, I'll be quiet, too. All right, Jules. How do you know, Mr. Lawson? He came to my house three days ago and offered my wife and me a thousand dollars to get out of our house for two days and not to say a word about it, even to the police. He said it was a joke. All right, Lawson. What do you say to that? Uh, nothing. Look, we know you wrote letters to the Jones girl. We know she was going to blackmail you. We know that message you fake was written on your typewriter. You know a lot, don't you? And Grandpa here has identified you. So talk. What was all this business of switching houses, Lawson? Ignore that question, Lawson. Gladly. But answer this one. What was all this business of switching houses, Lawson? Wonderful question, Inspector. Quiet, Blackie. Go on, Lawson, talk. I... I have nothing to say. He doesn't have to say anything now. He went out to 484 Willow Street after he opened Evelyn's letter... Then he saw the house next to 484 was identical and got an idea. So that gave you an idea, Lawson. It might even have given you one, Faraday. Yes, that gave me an idea. I was desperate. I borrowed the house from the old couple and sent Evelyn the note to meet me at 2 o'clock, an hour earlier than she was to meet Corrigan, and then I, I switched the house numbers so that when Evelyn arrived at 484, she came into my house and Corrigan. So you killed him and took the letters? Yes, after I knocked out Blackie here, I switched the house numbers back to their original position and put Evelyn's body in Corrigan's house. Well, that explains everything. With the exception of the door, Faraday, why did you switch the doors in the two houses, Lawson? I, I had to. You made a scratch on the door when you broke the lock, so I, I had to switch them when I put the house numbers back where they belong. Thanks, Lawson. Well, Faraday, I've heard of one on the house, but this is the first house I've ever heard of that was one on us. Mm-hmm.